Okay, so I'm going to answer some questions with real answers, not the bullshit 2020 election answers that everybody's been given about street owls. And um, we're going to start this thing by saying, you know, we get about 100 to 150 messages a day on the page. And when I go through there and I read those messages, and yes, I read all the messages. Um, I may be doing it two or three o'clock in the morning, so I, I told you guys I may only respond with a thumbs up because I'm not going to sit there and type a bunch of stuff out. But <clears throat> there, there's people that's been asking me from the start. You know what happened with Big Chief? You know what happened with Chief? What happened with the show? Blah 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 blah. I've been trying to stay out of all that stuff, but of course I know what happened to Chief. Of course I know what I. I I actually live in the 405. I'm still friends with most of the guys on the show, so and the guys on the other shows, and so of course I know what happened. But I was staying out of it until I keep getting these messages that said, "Hey, look, production's doing the same thing to Chief that they did to you. Hey, look, production's that they're playing games with Chief. Hey, they're being mean to Chief." And I'm sitting there reading that, and you know, the only thing that keeps going through my head is bull fucking shit. Not even fucking close of what happened. So, I'm going to tell you guys what really happened. And at any time, Chief is welcome to come sit with me, and we'll go, we'll go live. And he can rebut anything I say. One, he won't never come around me. Two, well, you know, let's just talk. Just me and you. Let's just talk. You know, how's your family? That motherfucker ain't never treated nobody like that in his life. He don't even treat his friends that way. But you can see there's there's like 15 or 20 edits in his video in the first 30 seconds. Because I, I don't know if he couldn't keep the line going or what. But let's rewind. Let's talk about real shit that really happened. And anybody in the 405 will collaborate this. Anybody. You will not get anybody to back up that bullshit he's saying. First off, production picks on him. Horror shit. We'd show up with a call time, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, we'll be racing when it turns dark. We might start racing at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, midnight, because guess what? Chief was never there. He wouldn't roll in till he felt like rolling in. So the rest of us all standing around, holding our dick in our hands like idiots, and we all had to see daylight and daylight coming up over the horizon. And at first, at least, we were actually getting races. But the longer it went, then it was he'd show up at 9, 10 o'clock, do the driver's meeting that would be a bunch of bullshit for... An hour, what, what would you say? It's the hour, hour and a half, two hours of bullshitting around. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, everybody get their cars out. When it came to time for his race, hour and a half, two hours, as much as three hours, just before his car was ready. Excuse me, guys. Ready to make a pass. So the rest of us are all standing around because everything's locked up waiting on this race. And then daylight would come. Well, they can't film it during daylight. Then that shit got so bad, and, and everybody, everybody to 405 at first was all pissed off. JJ, you know, JJ's this, and JJ's that. Production loves JJ. Here's why production loves JJ. They show up down there to film. He's got 25 cars sitting there ready. He, he'll race on any road. We'll come back to that. They'll race so many times that production's going, we're done, stop, stop. We can't use everything we have. And he did that every time. What JJ would do is his fucking job. All of us were there to do our job, but because Big Chief was, was the star of the show, race master, we all had to wait around on him. So, and let's talk about real street. Race anywhere. I was excited to go down there and race on asphalt. Pull shit and wet. Chief never wanted to race anywhere but Okima because he had 100,000 licks down that road. And that road is a phenomenal road. And he knew 
that that he he knows that road. Everybody in the 405 knows that road. We've all made multiple, multiple, multiple passes on it. And it is the best, it is as close to a racetrack as you will ever get on an actual street. <clears throat> when we were running out, they were saying, out of town races. Everybody's screaming, out of town, out of town, out of town. So we, we were all told by production, find races. Find 10 people that are races. Jeff Lutz goes out and gets 10 guys from Florida. Go back and watch that episode. Watch the way tr Chief treats Jeff Lutz on that deal. Treats him like a piece of shit. Acts like, I mean, every time was just giving more and more static. We had a good time racing those guys in Florida. Um, let's see. Ryan and I went out. We found some out-of-town racers. They, they, we found a road. We found everything ready. Chief shot it down. Uh, let's say about another good one. Oh, oh, and this is my favorite. This is absolutely my favorite. Everybody on the show realized, guys, a long time ago that you guys couldn't relate with our cars. They were getting out of hand and all of that. So Ryan and I propose, let's go small tire. Actually, I told Ryan we needed to go small tire. I let Ryan take it to the group because Ryan was more, because, of course, mine and Chief's battles is what cost me, the, 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 caused all the aggravation. But I'm not going to talk about what he's done to me. I'm going to talk about what he's done to everybody else in the 405. So you guys have a better understanding of Chief. So Ryan, we're going, you know, Ryan goes, you know what? He goes, we got to come up with something different. I said, small tires, dude. Let's go small tire. Think about it. There's, there's 100,000 small tire cars where there's maybe 30,000 big tire cars. And those guys on small tires, they feel like they, they'll race anybody on small tires because the tire is the equalizer. So <clears throat> this, go back and watch the driver's meeting, guys, before one of the races. or are racing small tire, guys. You know, I had actually tried, uh, uh, I was in the middle of testing my orange car on small tires. So Sean asked, he goes, hey, he said, you got small tires on your 69? I said, yeah, but it's, it's an untested deal. I said, but if I need to, I'll bring it on small tires, but it's yeah, not really tested. Like that, I think, what was the deal with that? Is that why I was testing the orange car? Why didn't I have small tires on? You had small tires on the orange car. I don't remember the exact thing. I don't remember if it was that, that I'd ran Reaper on small tires, but I said, we need another small tire car, Will, because we had half small tire, half big tire. So Sean agrees to come on small tires. Chief agrees to come on small tires. Dave agrees to come on small tires. And Ryan's coming on small tires, and Jeff Lutz was coming on small tires. You guys remember what happened? We all, everybody else showed up, ready to race our races the way we brought our cars. Chief shows up on big tires. Never said a word to nobody. Never said, "Hey guys," you know. And, and he's the he's the, the the street is all about it. And I'll race anybody anytime. Just like when he went to to Ducks race. And couldn't even make it in the field for two years. Somebody went up there and made it in the first time in Radio versus the World. First time ever being on radio. I'm not going to say no names, but I think this was for James Goat. Anyway, so he didn't even show up on small tires. He shows up on big tires and thinks it's funny. Everybody was pissed. Dave raced. Ryan raced. Sean raced. Everybody said they were going to be there was there except for Chief. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, yeah. A lot of work. Because you guys don't understand, just going from small tire to big tire, you just don't change the tires. You got to change the four link. You got to change converter. You got to change everything in the car. So everybody else put in the work. And he didn't even tell nobody he wasn't bringing them. Which we all thought was chicken shit. Um, and then there's the out-of-town races. There was always something wrong. Hey, productive. Because these roads have to be permitted, guys. You, you can't just turn around and run cars like this out on the street, open, all night long, and you're not going to get caught. So they permit the road, okay? Every time they would find a road that, to permit, they'd say, well, we found a road, but it's asphalt. Chief, nope, we're not racing on that. We're not racing on that. No, we're not racing on that. Shot it down every time. Well, we, we want to go out of town and race these guys. What? No, no, no. There's no point in us racing those guys. And here was one of my favorite ones. Or he would get the 
guys to all say their cars were broke so they couldn't race on asphalt. Well. That, that one. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't going to bring that up because it makes some of the other guys look bad. But, 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 but let me say this. One time, everybody claimed, a bunch of the guys all claimed their cars were broke so they didn't have to race on this asphalt road. Now, let, let, let me take one moment to explain why Chief could manipulate everybody like that. For a long time, everybody on the 405 thought, Chief snapped his fingers, you were gone. I made it my mission to make sure everybody understood because you guys know if there was even one person that he would have fired, it was me. Matter of fact, he called and said, I didn't want to get off this subject with me, but I'm going to lead into this, take it up for those guys. Because they thought anything that they said that was out of line, he didn't like, there would be repercussions. There was always repercussions, do not get me wrong, but they weren't from production. It was from Chief going to this person, this person. He is a master manipulator. I've always said that about him from day one. He's a master manipulator. So, yeah, one time, hey, guys, just tell your cars were broke, blah, 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 blah. Games, bullshit. They show up over there. One time I was hung out on an OTS, or they were supposed to come film at my shop after they got through with Chief and Sean. He purposely fucked and hung that deal out till like 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. And they said, by the time they got done, they say, hey, man, we're not. I said, hey, guys, I'm going to bed. I'm not waiting. These production things was over and over and over and over. And I'll be honest with you, we were all sitting there wondering, who does he have a video of somebody fucking a goat that he's using the state to build to pull this shit? For years he's done that. So, let's talk about street cars. All wanted to go small tire. All wanted to start doing more shit having to do with cars that were closer to being street cars. You want no part of it. Shot that shit down, says dumb, it's stupid, it, it, it'll hurt us, it'll hurt our ratings. Oh, well, if you guys take this to Sam, I can't save you if you get in trouble. Um, I know, because he tried that stupid shit on me, and I said, you save me? You can't save me. You don't even have the power to fire me, dude. If you did, you'd have already done it. And I said, to be honest with you, um, fuck you and your fat face. And he said, well, maybe I'll just whoop your ass. I fired up my truck. I said, you at, the, you at Midwest or you at Chas and Yukon? Because I'm on my way. Of course, that place was locked down like Fort fucking Knox by the time I got there. That's why Chief won't get close to me. Because he knows I owe him one. I hope that man about put me back in prison. We'll talk about that at a later date. But right now, let's talk about the 405 Fugazi bullshit that's went on. So... <clears throat> Well, with everything that we've ever come up with that everybody else wanted to do, he has shot down repeatedly over and over. Truck races. We want to have truck races. Guess what? Chief drives his truck out there with a pro charge that got all this sponsored shit for this truck. Oh, I can't race my truck. It's on 20s and, and blah, 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 blah. Just like his big bad Cadillac. Look what happened at, at the daily driver race. He pulled up there. He showed up there with a Cadillac. After acting like an ass clown ran in the ass head of somebody because he was screwing off and wasn't paying attention to what he's doing. Um, but he gets all pissed off at the daily driver race, turns around, walks off, jumps in his car, leaves. So you guys never see him at the daily driver race. Even though at that time he had Jackie's Cadillac, big bad Cadillac. But when he came out there, he's saying he was going to get his ass handed to him in, in, with a quickness. He'd have never made it past that blue Chevy, too. Actually, he'd never made it through half of those cars. And when he seen that, whew, off he went. My car is damaged. Now that, that he, he bumped into that, that car. There was a lady or something. Like that. He bumped into that car up in Edmond. I think it was in Edmond, Oklahoma city. He drove the car all the way to Okima, but my car's not safe to race. That was the excuse he used and didn't race his car. Um, so, Every idea that anybody's ever came up with has been shot down by him. And of course, at that point in time, nobody knew that there's a direct line to Pilgrim. You, we work for Pilgrim through Discovery because Discovery pays Pilgrim, Pilgrim pays us. But there's a chain of command. At one point, <clears throat> Chief decided he was 
he was too big to have to deal with anybody else. So he tried to jump straight to discovery. And then he went to run in his mouth. And then he didn't show up for filming. And then he did something else. So finally they said, you know what? Just stay home. Stay home for an episode or two and think about whether you really want this job. Everything I'm saying can be verified by anybody in the 405 or go back and watch the, the, the episodes and it's right there. You'll see it. So at one point, remember when Chuck stepped up and was the race master for a couple races. So why they covered his ass, I don't know. But the truth of the matter is, that's when he got sent to the corner. Sean Ellington said, if you do that to him, then I'm not going to come either. Rode with his boy. This is a fact. I called Sean Ellington and said, dude, what the fuck are you doing? You know he's in the wrong. Why are you riding with him? He said, man, he's my partner. He's my best friend. And I got to ride with him. It's the right thing for me to do. So he did. So you know what Sean's punishment was? Because he stayed off the show that Chief wasn't on. They put him at home for two more episodes. Did Chief stay home with him? Fuck no. Watch, the, watch them episodes and you'll see exactly what I'm saying is true. Sean Ellington stayed with him for a long time because Sean Ellington is a good, righteous dude. And he, he tried to do everything he could to make that shit right. It's just he finally realized no matter what he did, he was just going to keep getting drugged down. Because it was always, every time Chief would fuck up, it was Chief and Sean. Chief and Sean. Chief and Sean. Sean wasn't the one doing it. Sean just wants to race. So, now we've talked about some of the, some of the, uh, Fugazi shit in the 405 that he's done. Now, now guys, get your head wrapped around this. This has been happening. The show's damn near 10 years old. I'm not for what? You came on season six, and that was seven years ago. Seven years ago. Um, this shit was going on before I got there. And then I watched all this shit playing out. And I was like, fuck. It wasn't no fun because we couldn't just go race. It was all about, let's. Do, oh, then it was us against them. So he tried to get all, he got all the guys to jack with production. Slow play them, not show up. Show up late. Say, I can't do it because of this. I can't do it because of that. At the whole time, he's thinking he's making a power play. He's not making a power play. All he's doing is burning everybody in the 405 with Discovery and everybody else, because it looks like a bunch of assholes, prima donna pricks that don't want to do nothing. So, let's discuss one of my other favorite topics. Uh, oh, yeah, I wrote some of this stuff down, so I would remember it in the heat of the moment. Uh, What's your Jeopardy name? Um... Oh, I was just thinking about, there's so many of those things in my head, just to going over one, and I'm trying to keep from jumping from one to the other to the other, and back and forth and all that, and it's hard to do, because I put up with this shit for six years. My problem was not with the 405, my problem was with Chief, and the bullshit, because I didn't feel like we were doing what we needed to do. The day Chief and I stopped talking, this is why. Oh! Why did I forget? MPK. MPK was not his idea. He had nothing to do with it. Nobody took it through him to go to Pilgrim, to go to Discovery. Chiefy was here, and I went, choop, choop, boop, boop, choop. Tipped on top, of it, on top of his head. And when that deal started, you guys remember, he did all these fucking videos slamming MPK. Blah, blah, blah. What everything he did was negative about it. Slamming it, taking it down, you know. <clears throat> telling other guys, you gotta ride with me on this. They're, they're screwing us out of money. So that's why some guys didn't show up for a long time, because he's telling them, guys, we gotta stand together. 405, bride till we die, brothers till the end. And those guys were still drinking that Kool-Aid at the time. When he did show up to one in Memphis was because they paid him. Tell you something about the first season of MPK that nobody, no, you guys don't know. 
Nobody got paid. When Ryan and I, I was talking to Ryan about that when we pulled Chuck in on that deal, and I'm going, guys, we need to do this. This will be a great show. Let's show them that we're willing to put into work to get it started. And everybody that you guys seen that first season did for nothing. Just to get a new show started. Something that we could have fun at. The whole reason I, I wanted to do MPK was because I, I knew that bullshit with the flashlight, the pumps, the sideways talking, the hey, tell him he's got to jump. Chief's going to make him jump. All that shit. Chief was out of the fucking equation, basically what it come down to. And look how happy everybody is on that show. Look what that show's doing. So, he slammed MPK, but, but they did. They kind of forced him to come to one of the, the, the was season two. Was the, it was season two. At first one was at Memphis, yeah. They forced him to come, but they paid him handsomely to do it. Do not get me wrong. He made them pay him to show up. So he shows up at the MPK. After the race, um, I was always the last one to leave. Because, really, I was just so exhausted from working on the car and everything else. I just didn't get in a hurry to leave. So, he was over there. He was having problems with his truck or something. And he pulls over by me, and he goes, hey, man. He goes, everything okay? You need anything? I said, no, nah, no. Nah. I said, I'm just not getting in a hurry. I said, boy, I said, this, this was intense, wasn't it? I'm talking about, you know, it was super hot. The fans were super stoked. I mean, these, I mean, they were, they were off the chain in Memphis. They were so excited. And, and you can always tell when you're at that really excited crowd because, I mean, they just, it's like they're just everywhere. And it was a great feeling, do not get me wrong. But when I said that, that's what I meant. This is exactly word for word what he said and the way he looked at me. I know, I fucking hate him. I hate every fucking one of them. Bring their fat, sweaty, greasy ass hands up there. Want to shake hands with me. Want to sit there and take a picture with me. You can't trust them. You turn your back for one second, they're stealing your stuff. I'm like, whoa. Dude, you're talking about fat. He goes, I fucking hate them. Dude, you realize without those fans, we wouldn't be here. Bullshit. We're here because of what we've done. We're here because of my, you know, I took this thing where it is. I did this. I did that. Fans had nothing to do with it. That's your boy that some of you take care of all the time and stand up and fight for and all that shit. That's that man's character. So, that, I never spoke to Chief after that because that was the final straw with me. If that's how you feel about the people that support us, it's one thing to fuck with production. It's one thing to fuck with the guys. It's one thing to play your games all the time. But when you don't appreciate the people that are coming out there spending their money because they want a fucking picture with you and they, they just want to meet you and, and they're beneath you, fuck you. <clears throat> Those are the last words I ever said to Chief. Other than one phone call. And I said right then there, I said, dude, I don't like nothing that you're about anymore. And I made up my mind, I pretty much made up my mind right then that I was over this shit and I was done. And I was not going to fucking speak to him. I was not going to deal with him because, guys, you see how I am with you guys. That's how everybody should be. They should show some appreciation for the fact that you guys have made Street Outlaws the number one brand in America. Everybody should have a little bit of fucking respect for Discovery because they back some of these deals not knowing whether they work or not. Yes, we made them work. But they gave us the opportunity to make them work. Pilgrim. Yeah, Pilgrim may not do shit that you want them to do. They may try to get you to do the drama shit and all that. But still, they're there to do their job every day. Needs to be some appreciation shown for them other people. So it's not only the fact that he's trying to play the victim on this again. But the fact he's slamming everything. And now he's sucking you guys. Is, oh, oh, oh. Oh, let's talk. Let's just. It's just me and you. How's the family doing? See, he couldn't even keep from saying, how, how, how living it with your mom in the basement or something. He couldn't keep that out. That's probably one thing that got past the 300 edits. That took, uh, uh, it's a wonder his video don't look like Max Hedrum. As many times that thing had to get sliced up. You'll know there ain't no slices in this video. <clears throat> now, let's talk about the real deal. 
What happened at America's List? Chief got picked on. He, JJ threatened his life. Uh, he was just trying to do his job. He's just trying to enforce the rules. Blah, 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 blah. And by the way, let's get this straight right now. Chase the race was his fucking idea. All of you that fucking blame that on JJ, him and JJ at the time were, were, were pretty tight. Remember, they went down there and raced. He drove on JJ's cars. That's how tight they are. You guys watch the episode. So when they're doing the rules for America's List, Chief said, Chase the race is good. Let's do it. Yeah, so now he's talking about this chase, the race, and all these fucking rules. He was the one that came up with these rules, guys. This was his bullshit show because still, after him shitting on production and shitting on us and shitting on uh, 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 Discovery and everybody else, he was still the leader of this show, of the 405. He was still the leader of Street Outlaws. All the rules were his rules. Because if they weren't his rules, he wouldn't participate. Keep that in mind. Uh, oh, we got to back up on this deal. The rule has always been the whole reason the show, the list was started, was to get, take the five fastest guys to race out of town. Go back and watch for the first three seasons I was on. I never fell out of the top five. Never once fell out of the top five. How many out of town races did I go to, Stacy? Which one? When, uh, Memphis. Huh? Oh, two. No, no, nope, nope, that wasn't an out of town race. We raced here in Seminole. That wasn't out of town. Or you didn't go out of town. I never got to go out of town. And, and it wasn't even his call. It's because we all went, and he didn't want to go, period, because he didn't want to race Memphis again. And they were beneath us, blah, 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 blah. That's the only out of town race I went to. Oh, yeah. We'll get to that, Dad. That New Orleans thing. So there was a big thing there for a while. 405 scared, blah, blah, blah. Let me tell you something right now. We all wanted to fucking race New Orleans. Me, Ryan, Lutt, all of us wanted to race New Orleans. We even said it would be the baddest fucking show we'd done today. It would be a blowout. Everybody would love it. That would give us some good competition, but we're still going to kick their ass. Chief absolutely refused to ever let that happen. Said he would walk away if we ever race New Orleans, because all it did, this is what he told all the guys too, all it does is build their show up and knock our show down. That's, that's, that's some more facts for you. So let's talk about what happened at America's List. So, all this bullshit you got, here's the real truth. Anybody in the 405 can verify this and back it up. Anybody, except Chief, because Chief probably... I don't know. He probably done so much shit in his... He probably put so much shit up his nose, he don't know which ends up. I shouldn't have said that. But I'm not, I'm not going to go back and edit it out either. So. Jackie pulled a shitty move, probably pushed by Chief, on Precious. Precious was ready to beat her ass. Because as you know, JJ and them down there, they don't put up with that shit. They just soon fucking fight if you try to fuck him over. So his excuse production was he was scared that Precious was going to hurt Jackie. That's one of his reasonings. Now, that did actually happen, and that part is true that he's not telling nobody. But here's what happened in the driver's meeting. See, I still get phone calls and text messages the night of. So am I in the loop? Fuck yeah, I'm in the loop. Do I talk about it? Fuck no, because there's no point. I'm not a part of it, but those are still my friends down there. So uh, in the driver's meeting, JJ is trying to pin Chief down on these rules. And Chief says, well, when that happened, JJ's like, hey, what if this happens? What are we going to do? He goes, well, when that happens, we'll talk about it. We'll go to committee. No, JJ goes, no, 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 no. No, what are we going to do? He was wanting clarification. Chief couldn't give it to him because he didn't know what the fuck to say. Because there's something else that they probably don't want me to say. And production's going to get mad at me. At one time, we were trying to get Chief done, over with, busted. We shot an episode with the guys, the majority of the guys. And when we come to the driver's meeting that Monday, 
No. On Friday, we all had our plan on what we were going to say. If you guys go back and watch the episode, you'll see Chuck bowing up to him. You'll see me bowing up to him. You'll see Ryan start to bow up to him. But he had an answer for everything we came off with. I told Ryan, I said, I don't get it. He goes, dude, he said, motherfucker's just smart. I said, the fuck if he is? He was a motherfucking air conditioner guy. He ain't never had a pot to piss in. When the fucking throw it out up till this show? If motherfucker was smart. He wouldn't need fucking all that money. He wouldn't need anybody else's money. I don't. I work for mine. He ain't that fucking smart, dude. There's something going on here. And he goes, well, man, he remembers this shit. Yeah, he remembers it. Because somebody in fucking production was telling him what we'd already filmed. Yeah. They was telling him. Thinking they were just telling him in confidence or whatever. He had all the answers because he knew everything that we talked about. Everything that we were going to bring up, he already knew the answers to. Now, we're going back and forth. Past, present. This is like one of the movies where you see somebody, the ones that you love so much, the ones that you love that stays sits there and goes, is, is this now or then? So, that's what we're doing. We're doing a then and now. So here's the now part. So JJ puts him on the spot because here's the thing about JJ, and I've told you guys from day one, now everybody loves JJ, but you guys remember I defended that man from day one. I defended him because I sat down, I broke bread with him way back when, way back when. And, and I told everybody, when you meet that man, he's the, mo he's the most respectful man I have ever met in my life. One of the most respectful people until you disrespect him. So... When J.J., J.J.'s making TV, he's doing what he's supposed to do. Come on, give us the answer. Give us the answer. Give us the answer. Well, then he was getting pissed because he wasn't giving him the fucking answers. So, he walks off. Told production, well, J.J. was threatening me. Precious was threatening Jackie. We were in fear of our life. If I'm that motherfucking big, I ain't scared of nobody. I sure ain't gonna have one run around like putting it. I promise you, ain't nobody gonna jump on my fucking wife. Ain't nobody gonna get on my wife. I'll squash that deal. Me and her husband will fucking fall out. Which is what should have happened. She went over to JJ and said, hey, there's a problem between our wives. Let's me and you handle it. And been done with it. That didn't happen. He run and hid. He ran, he had, and, and now all this shit on the internet. Well, you know, let's just talk. You know, it's just. I don't know, when he's saying that shit, in his mind, he's going, I hate every greasy, nasty, sweaty, palm one. Because, by the way, Chief is a germaphobe. So every time you see Chief, I hope you sneeze in your hand before you go to shake his hand. And watch that motherfucker run backwards. That's why it was so funny with J.J. But he did And I promise you, he's about to lose his fucking mind. Them feet, them nasty ass feet, he's got to have to fucking touch something. He's a germaphobe. So, that was why he actually walked away. Then he tried to play it. Hey, production was jacking with me, telling Discovery, telling his, his agent and all that shit. And they're, they're going back and forth. And he's trying to cover it up. But think about this, guys. What's his thing? 405, ride or die. 405 to the end. I ride with my boys no matter what. Tell you what he did, he left every one of my fucking friends in basically what we would consider on the street enemy territory and fucking left them high and dry. Never said, never pulled everybody up like a, a real man would have say, hey guys, man, I'm not going to deal with this bullshit, blah, 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 I got a problem, blah, 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 I'm fucking out. No. He ran off like a bitch in the night and left everybody in the 405 down there by themselves. There's still some guys I don't get along with in the 405, but Ryan Martin is one of my best friends. Sean Ellington's a friend. Uh, Jerry Johnson, Mons is a friend. Dominator's a friend. Jeff Lutz is a friend. These guys are my friends. I've known Jeff Lutz since 2012. I've known Ryan Martin before Street Outlaws was ever a fucking show. Sean Ellington's the reason I got back in this, which by the way, Sean, I hate you for that. But that guy's never done me wrong. Yeah, yeah, I do. Every time I look at my wallet, time I look at my bank account, thinking about all them years ago when I said, fuck it. 
He's the fastest. I'm going to get that back. That's the dumbest fucking move I ever made in my life. But Sean, Sean's, one, Sean has never backdoored me. Dominator. Dominator has tried to, to the best of his ability every time to do the right thing every time and he does. Jerry Johnson, believe it or not, Jerry and I get along great. Because we go somewhere, we just ride. We don't talk. We listen to the radio, play 80s fucking hair bands. These guys are all friends. He left all my friends down there, and I'm not saying the other guys that were there are enemies, but I mean, come on, when you're a team, you're, you're another reason I'm not going to be on a team, because I got too many friends that are there on other teams that I will back up regardless of what the area code is. Like I said a long time ago, the area code don't define me, but my friends do. He left, he left the team, he left the guys, he left his homeboys, as he calls it, my boys left them and never said a fucking word to them. So, that's the guy that's now playing the victim on this shit. Really. Seriously. I can't believe he even... Well, but, but then again, then again, he is one of the most... He is a master manipulator. I've said it from day one. You guys go back and watch any video. I've always said that. He's out for him. He's out for him only. He don't give two fucks about production. All he cared about, he don't give a fuck about a fan. He don't care about anything but himself and what he can gain. That's the guy that some of you put up on a pedestal and send me messages going, man, I wish you a chief would bury the hatchet. I'll bury the hatchet with the man right in the back of his fucking skull because he about put me back in prison with his poking other people to come after me because he didn't have the balls to say anything to me. Like I said, guys, I didn't want to go off on this bullshit. Didn't want to be a part of this bullshit. But when that shit's happening, I just can't keep my mouth shut. And oh, by the way, uh, 405. So the 405 is not responding to any of this. And you guys, some of you, are browbeating them going, why don't you guys say something? Why don't you tell a story? Blah, blah, blah. Think about it like this. If you were held, if you were in a, in, in a, in a camp and, oh, if you were in prison, if you were in prison for six, seven, eight, nine years, being told what to do, how to do it, your livelihood threatened, all of that threatened all the time, and all of a sudden all the guards were gone, the warden's gone, and the fence are down, what are you going to do? You going to fucking celebrate they're so happy that motherfucker's gone. Ain't none of them got time to think about him. That's what's going on in 405. Go to Ryan Martin's page. You see Daddy Day, Sean Ellington, Ryan Martin, all the guys all out riding four-wheelers. All right, out riding side by sides, having a good time. Yeah, the 405 is heartbroken over cheap, I promise you. So, and I got a call the other day, and Ryan and I were talking, and Sean and I have been talking. I even talked to Dave the other day. Um, so the, the people that say the 405 is going to fold up because Chief's not here, let me promise you that I promise you this and I'll bet everything I own on it. The next season of the 405, when these small tire cars, real fucking cars, badass racing on any fucking street anywhere against anybody. And you tell me how the four or five, the show will be better than it's ever been before because everybody right now is doing something that never happened on that show while I was there. Except one time everybody came together in Seminole and you guys have heard me talk about this. Only time I ever thought I was on a team, only time I felt like they were actually my brothers had my back. That's it. Of all six years of doing it, that's the only time I felt that way. Let's see what happens now. Because... Ding dong, ding dong, ding. Where is the king? He's gone. Chief is gone. He ain't coming back. Nobody wants him back because the final nail in his coffin was when all guys got together and said, hey, we don't want no part of him no more. He just left us high and dry. There's your chief. There's what really happened. 
Anybody that wants to know what really happened, ask anybody in the 405. The guys are trying to stay out of it so they don't want to get in the middle of this shit. Plus, they're fucking tired of hearing his name. So, but there's a lot of surprises and a lot of cool shit, a lot of badass shit. And people may show back up at the 405 that you never thought would.